It's Wednesday night. You know what that means. You are on the Wrestling Inc. podcast where the trio is with you tonight. We are locked, cocked, ready to fire all the hot takes about tonight's AEW Dynamite. I am Justin LaVar, coming to you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, being joined by my normal partners in crimes on this Hump Night podcast. First, up north. Across the border in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. He made his living wearing stripes, counting to three for over 20 years in the WWE. He is renowned author, renowned friend, renowned referee, renowned podcaster, the one, the only, Jimmy Corderas. Aha, uh-huh. thank you. That, that was an incredible introduction. But you also forgot, occasionally I did count to 10, which we... It's a lost yeah. art. Yeah, lost art. Yeah, lost okay. art. I guess you're also you're also a renowned chef too. I see your I see your pictures of you and Audra always uh, firing up in the kitchen there. No, you know what is I'm I'm having a lot of fun doing it, and uh, you know I got a master to learn from because uh, I got a I got a hand it to Audra. She's uh, how I'm not bigger than I am is is incredible. But it's because she everything she cooks is is awesome, and I'm learning from the best. So. Well, it's because you eat up, but then you 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 burn all those calories off of those ref and rants. Uh, ah, there you that's go. the key. That's the key. There, yeah, there you he, go. He's uh, got that's, the, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. There we go. <laughs> he's got the key to the north. She's got the key to the south down in the beautiful island of Puerto Rico. She is the spiciest thing south of Miami. She is our resident demon diva, the one, the only, Miss Isa. Isa, how are you tonight? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be with you guys to talk about <laughs> dynamite. Yeah, uh, so we'll talk about dynamite here, and before we go, kind of like segment by segment as we normally do uh the one news item we were going to talk about that was you know was the rumors uh, of where diana perrazzo could land next spoiler alert it's AEW. uh so there's no need to obviously talk about what that report contained because we now know that she is all elite so you know actually it's kind of before we get into segment by segment i wanted to kind of note something i, I just tweeted a, a condensed version of this a minute ago but it's been now exactly five years Five years ago, since AEW held that famous press conference in Jacksonville, where they announced uh, all elite wrestling and what it was going to be, and we, you know, and I, and I was thinking back to that press conference and thinking about all the talent that was there, and talent like the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho, uh, Cody Rhodes, who of course has not been around for two years with uh, AEW, Joey Janela has not been around for several years. I don't remember if MJF was there, but you know, just think of these names: Bucks, Omega, Jericho, MJF, Britt Baker. None of those Britt names. Baker, it's always who I remember immediately. Yeah, none of those names uh, at all tonight on AEW Dynamite. So certainly, as Dynamite, and they acknowledge it tonight in Dynamite, certainly a feeling of moving forward, and the main event kind of symbolized that uh, as the way they set it up. But tonight, Issa, this Dynamite truly did feel like a move in the next chapter for for AEW. Now, granted, a lot of those names that I did say are injured or have something going on, but still, just right. to see a dynamite with all of them not on there is crazy. Yeah, I, I think there was some some presences that were missed in the show tonight. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the you and you have what a quarter of your roster in Japan right now for Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, you have Moxley's over there. You know, Brian is over there. I I did think that the, there was something a little bit missing, but it's crazy to think it's been five years. That day was such revolutionary for the business and we were all talking about it and it felt like something big was happening and i don't actually whether you like it or hate it or with the up and downs that that aw has had it really changed the the atmosphere of everything and i don't think that we would have seen some of the crazy deals that we're seeing and some of the crazy moves or even the booking the creative wwe stepping it up without aw and its creation so that day truly changed the the landscape for the business Oh, absolutely. Did. No, no doubt about it. Uh, Jimmy, five years later, <clears throat> AEW has grown for the positive in many ways. Uh, and then in other ways, we're looking and it's it, it feels like there's been some regression from how they started as, you know, truly an alternative to, to you know, where you might categorize them in some, you know, in, in, with some things uh, today. Uh, yeah. What did you make of tonight's show overall before we go uh, segment by segment? And, and most notably, like I said, the lack of the OGs. That's that was the thing. It, 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 it's not that the presentation, what we saw in the ring and that sort of stuff was was, uh, you know, 
horrible or anything like that. And it, it, there were, you know, the little things that I can, you know, sometimes like to rant about, the, the, you know, the tightening of certain screws. But at the same time, like like uh, Issa said, and like you said, Justin, there was a, a lack of that, for lack of a better term, star power. I mean, yes, you want to bring up your younger talent and you want to, you, you know, elevate the next, you know, segment of your roster. But at the same time, you need those talents to help elevate them because, you know, they, they also bring more eyes to the product. No, absolutely. They absolutely do. And, uh, and, and obviously again, you know, noting all those names, it's just kind of fun just because it is a, just a, a fact that I realized a few minutes ago, just before they went off the air as we we're seeing the completion of the show, but like, but you know, you need, uh, you need those established eyes to help give the rub, but you also need to make room for, you know, who, who's next up. So, uh, I, th I think at some points in the show, I could see that and other points I saw where I felt that they were, were lacking. So let's dive into it. Appreciate everybody who's in the chat already getting going. Uh, of course, uh, if you want to make sure you join the panel here, you can do a super chat, uh, for whatever you can, uh, afford to give. We appreciate any amount, uh, leave a comment, uh, you know, after the fact on this podcast is always appreciated, whether you're watching the video or whether you're doing the audio, wherever you get your podcast there. And of course, any five-star ratings, any, any, any reviews you want to leave any, any tell a friend, share with a friend, all that, uh, greatly appreciated here on this rest of the Night podcast. So we kick it off tonight in Newark, New Jersey, and, uh, we get a Samoa Joe pre-tape, uh, or well, rather a promo that was taped after his victory at Saturday's world's end. And he said how he had he got everyone to turn against MJF, and they showed up and beat MJF in front of any friends and family that he had left. Uh, said that he is Samoa Joe, and he will take everything from anyone who tries to come after him in his world title. So I haven't got to talk to three of you about World's End, uh, so this is kind of uh, fresh for me to get your, your perspectives. But uh, uh, Issa, uh, Samoa Joe, our new AEW world champion, uh, what did you make of them kicking off with this uh, promo from him uh, backstage at World's End? I loved it. I loved it. And I think that that's how you have to do it. If somebody didn't watch World's End and you don't start with this, they might be wondering where's NJF, this devil stuff. So that put a lot of things together. It was a great way to catch you up with what you were going to see up next without having to show a big recap and all that. And Samoa Joe, I'm so happy that he's the world champ. I think it's about time that he won the big one. And it's Awesome. I, any promo that he cuts, I've always found them believable. Whether he kept going on a losing stream, it doesn't matter. That man speaks and you automatically believe everything that he's telling you. With the title, it, it looks even better. Uh, Jimmy, uh, I was expecting MJF to lose the title. Just the injuries and, you know, you figure the devil would be revealed. So how is he going to retain the title with the devil still? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not surprised that Joe took the title here. But, you know, it does look like we're in for a Samoa Joe era with MJF uh, out on injury and or not signed. You know, that's a whole other conversation. What did you make of Joe as your new champion? And uh, did, did you buy what he was selling in this promo? Oh, I, I, I'm a big fan of Joe. And yes, uh, I, I like seeing him as the AEW champion and listening to him talk. Like you guys said, he's believable because he's a legit badass. Let's put it that way. And it comes across like that. And when you hear him, you go, oh, yeah, I believe what this guy is telling me. But, the only, you know, again, if I could nitpick a little bit. Yes, I like the fact that it was fresh right after the win. It was taped, you know, after you know, after the defeat of MJF, but at the same time, it would have been nice to, you know, you, you want to start the show off with a bang, start off with your new world champion coming out it, it, live in front of that crowd and get that live reaction. I don't know. It's just that, that, that little thing that I think would have been, uh, but other than that, it came off well and came off believable. And I'm actually looking forward to the Samoa Joe era. Well, I, I also thought the promo was really good. I guess I'll, uh, I'll I'll volley back against you, Jimmy, on the point of, you know, we, we know that we're going to hear from and we need to hear from Adam Cole and company uh, because of the betrayal. And so we know we're going to get that live. Now, they could, they, yes, they could have had Joe come out at a separate time to have another live in, in front of the crowd promo. But I actually think in past we might have seen Dynamite um, almost almost bury a promo like Joe's. They, they, they would tuck it in somewhere after maybe a, a 20 pound intense uh, match or segment. I actually like the fact they didn't even do an intro video. They didn't do the dynamite intro video. They went right to as a cold open, kind of like they do with collisions. They went right to a cold open. So that grabbed my attention that we got Joe immediately getting to have his victory speech. Cause if, if for those that saw world or those that didn't see worlds in Joe wins the title via sleeper, you know, chokes MJF out. He gets the title and then he's out of there. 
I mean, he didn't even celebrate. All the TV focus was on now the the devil and the devil henchmen. So, you know, Joe didn't even really get it, 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 that kind of got buried Saturday night. So I'm glad they kind of rectify that in my mind by having him right up front remind people why he's a badass and why he is Samoa Joe. So uh, I actually thought good good on Dynamite to shake up the, the, the how they start the shows or how they might have treated this in past times. Um, real quick, separate note from from Samoa Joe or MJF. Uh, again, con- again going through the names and not there, not an OG at the press conference, but showed up. You know what? Five six months later, I believe at Double or Nothing, John Moxley also not mm-hmm. on tonight's Dynamite. Right. So very historic Dynamite for for mm-hmm. who was not there. He's in Japan. He's wrestling Wrestle Kingdom in a few hours. Yeah. Well, I know that. I'm just saying he's just not there. Yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, prayers to everybody in Japan. I, I, I know there was an earthquake. Yeah. Some, some craziness yes. going on in Japan. So hope everybody, mm-hmm. everybody's okay. Absolutely. All right. Well, who is there tonight in uh, Dynamite? Is the Undisputed Kingdom. That is Adam Cole alongside uh, Taven, alongside Roderick Strong, uh, alongside Wardlow, and Mike Bennett as well. And, and they come out, uh, new music and everything. Uh, Adam Cole sitting on the chair because he is still walking around in that walking boot. And he says that MJF made a ton of enemies and, and, and that most people in that locker room, if they haven't already done it at one day, they will thank Adam Cole and his group. Even Tony Khan one day will thank Adam Cole. Uh, MJF is a narcissist. He says MJF is no longer working there. Uh, he says that uh, Adam Cole said it was time for a change and the locker. And again, the locker room will say thank you and we'll thank him. Time for a change. And uh, he notes how we have the ROH tag champions. Notes how Roderick Strong's. Uh, got to gotta have a match uh, soon against uh, Orange Cassidy, I believe. He also notes how Wardlow, he says Wardlow is going to go after the AW world title. And then once Wardlow wins it, he's going to forfeit it over <laughs> to uh, to Adam Cole. So he kind of gives the rundown, uh, gives the lay of the land uh, of, of the Undisputed Kingdom. And then Jay White comes out, says that he does not like being jumped when he was alone, but now he's not alone anymore. So here comes the guns. They come out, but they're still outnumbered. And then to, uh, to to finish that off, the acclaim of Billy Gunn come out to run off the United Kingdom. Lot to unpack here, Jimmy. Uh, first <sighs> off, Adam Cole and the Undisputed Kingdom. Adam Cole is the devil. Uh, your reaction to that? I don't. I, I didn't mind it. I know some people were saying, "Oh, come on." Uh, I even heard, "Oh, that was so predictable." So what? It 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 worked. It did work. The only thing I don't like about is uh, it's it's the members. Okay. Yes, I get Roddy and the boys, but Wardlow being a follower again, here's a guy who came back and looked like they were on going to unwardlow him <laughs> as a, a and make him a legitimate threat. Yes, they planted a seed here with Adam Cole suggesting that he would win the, the AEW World Championship and then forfeit it over to him. And there was that slight little, I like that it was slight, slight little like, what the heck's he talking about? Look from Wardlow. But at the same time, for right now, again, he feels like he's in the background as opposed to being a guy who should be primarily featured, in my opinion. Issa, I feel like if you're Wardlow right now, Superman video, I was in the back. Lose Yourself video, I was in the back. I feel like he is just going <laughs> from one boy band to another, uh, being the guy who you know could kick everybody else in the group's ass, but they're just kind of... Uh, I mean, is this is this the the storyline that finally gets Wardlow broke? You know, that gets him broken out as the huge single star uh, and goes for world title that we always thought that he should have been doing. Incredible reference, huge pop. I knew so, you would get it. I knew you. Um, <laughs> um, no, I don't know that this is the story. I, I the problem is that with Adam Cole being hurt and. Us not knowing how long he's hurt for. Swerve mm-hmm. being clearly the next person up for this world championship opportunity, whether he's got to mingle with Adam Page or not, it doesn't feel like Warlow's going to get there right now. So even like when he said that, I'm like, yeah, okay, if Adam Cole was healthy and Warlow gets the title for him, I can see an incredible feud between the two of them, you know, going back and forth, who's going to get the title, but we don't know. I love, I, I mean, Adam Cole can talk and I like the explanation somewhat, but with him being injured, it just becomes so hard for me to buy this as a badass. And why are they following instructions from this guy who's just sitting on a chair the entire I don't know. You know, I want to see where it goes. I like the explanation. I like what happened after, but I do not think this is what gets Wordle to the next step. I definitely not. Yeah, we'll see. Um, 
you know, I, I, I'm, I'll, I'll, again, I'll wait and see, I guess, with this with yes. Wardlow. Um, Adam Cole, I will say this. I, um, I, I mean, I, Adam Cole is a tremendous babyface. He is so over when he is a babyface. He has so many things that make for longevity for a guy, you know, you know, having interactive music and chants and songs and everything that goes a long way. Uh, obviously he can't be that because you know, to be a great baby face, you need to be able to be a fighting baby face and he can't be a fighting baby face. So I do agree with, if you want to get him on TV, let him be a heel and you know, he can at least sit on his throne and manipulate and control everybody. Um, and, and you know, and so I'm, 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 I'm good at this. You know, I mean, it's not, you know, is, is it the biggest headline of him being the devil? No, but it also was kind of more logical. So, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. logical, sometimes logical, pre predictable is okay if it's logical. So I'm I'm willing to see this with Adam Cole and see where this goes. Uh, I guess the, my big question will be timetable of his health as it relates yeah. to the walking boot because yes. it's like. But you know, I'm sorry, just with what you said about him sitting in the throne. I needed the explanation live on the mm -hmm. ring, but now make them some kind of locker room backstage where he can sit there and direct his his yeah. devils to do <laughs> his duty. Like I don't need to see him in this condition out there because it's a hard. So he can do it and he can go on the mic. But when you're looking at the visual of it, I was I was doing my watch on and I'm almost like if I turn this way and I don't look at him and I'm listening to what he's saying, sounds great. But the visual doesn't right. match it. Now, if he has some kind of throne to just sit and direct people, I can probably buy it. No, I and I agree that he said yeah. I agree, especially because you stripped all the things that make seeing him live away. You've taken the song away. You've took the boom and all that stuff to baby. Mm -hmm. So I agree. Set him up in an undisputed kingdom clubhouse a la judgment day set him up somewhere backstage where he can be on, on top of his throne uh but the timetable of his health is what i'll be curious of because you know he he planted that seed with wardlow's gonna go do their bidding and get the world title and give it to adam cole uh yeah. obviously if mjf is still with the company which a lot of people believe that is the case but he just needs to he needs to take care of his health you know well whether when when mjf com comes back is also relevant to when M adam cole could go to to so like like, are we talking? Are we six months away from payoffs of Adam Cole being able to be physical? Or are we are we two months? Like, what is it? So that that's another thing that makes me curious. But I do think all all, all things considered, um, Adam Cole as a heel right now is the best way to get him on TV. No, yeah, agreed. So, be, that, uh, like you said, because because of the injury, you can get your henchman to do your dirty work for him. So to speak, yeah. uh, there's an old school word for you, henchman. Henchman. <laughs> henchman uh d cohen says great show was there live strong crowd yeah i mean they had the top tarped off but it looks like a solid five or six thousand they mm -hmm. had in the lower bowl so good on them uh dylan matthew says uh, come to the big come to the big time wardlow and bring the bar <laughs> yeah. i'm busy with wrestling inc and, and busted open and uh shout out there to daniel go. uh justin love busted open and sundays great job guys thank you very much daniel having a good time every single sunday on channel 156 all right, so that was uh, so all this. Now we still have not got a match yet, which is uh, kind of unusual for for AEW in a lot of ways. Uh, we finally get our first match in first match, of course. Oh wait, before cast. you go like, on, I forgot to say that I was a big fan of Jay White coming out because a lot of times they forget about things or they don't have that continuity. Yeah, yeah, Jay White got completely screwed over in this whole devil thing. So I did like the continuation of Jay White coming out and saying, "Hey, you, I thought you were my friend. You screw me over." I, I I did like it made sense, and I like when things make sense. Well, Jay, not only Jay, you're right, he said Jay White, but also even the acclaimed and Billy Gunn and them coming out because they, they were also victims of the devil's attack. Right. So that, that all did at least come to, back to be acknowledged, which was good. Which which gives them, again, the the, uh, the members of the devil's uh, crew, uh, people to, not just one group to go against. Yes. They, they've created many enemies, so there's uh, options and opportunities. Uh, I love history here. Uh, secular belt saying Bret Hart led a faction through '97 sitting in a wheelchair. This is true. That is very Good true. Point. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna crown Adam Cole as Bret Hart, but <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, or at least actually, that, well, the next show was actually that was actually Bret's best run on the mic was was him being uh, a hero in Canada and mm -hmm. <laughs> or or, or, or uh, heel in uh, U.S. hero everywhere else. Um, but yes, good 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 history to pull mm -hmm. there. All right, we got our first match: International Champion Orange Cassidy versus Dante Martin. Uh, Orange Cassidy is going to get the win. Not surprised here, uh, as he continues his run as International Champion. Post match, uh, out comes Private Party, and they put the AEW Tag Division on notice for 2024. He says it's been a minute since we've seen Private Party get this kind of prime time real estate on Dynamite. I was actually very happy to see them. 
I thought they were like, I remember there was a big bus going around them and then um, kind of went nowhere once they joined um, the Hardy family and they were doing all that stuff with the Hardy. It really cooled them off. I don't think it made sense that they came out here. This is a singles match for the, for the, whatever the name of that championship is. There's too many to keep up with. But like, why did they come out here to put the tag team division as champion after a singles match? Just well, like, well, 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 I mean, yeah. actually, after Orange Cassidy won, then uh, didn't he have, uh, I mean, we, we had, we had people come into the ring. We had. We I had get that, but we have people coming to the mm-hmm. ring after everything in AEW. Well, <laughs> and he, whether it's in the ring or backstage, there's always somebody. Yeah. Um, I'm happy for them. We'll see where it goes. Jimmy, what do you think of Private Party coming out here? No, I like it. They got a good reaction, and and they did. I yeah. like the fact, and 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 that means something. And and when people who are watching who may not be for, very familiar with them, let's let's put it that way, they when they hear that, they go, oh. Oh, these are guys that maybe I have to pay attention to. So now they've got a little bit of interest going. And that the, the fact that they put the entire tag division on notice, little things like that, that matters. So it's good to see them back, and hopefully they help bolster uh, that tag division. Yeah, uh, I, I would agree with all that. I really can't add much. I, I do agree. Pro- again, talk about this is kind of a, a sense of irony. Uh, I, I'm talking about the amount of um, you know AEW and Dynamite OGs who weren't on – but private party is one of the first tag teams they did have, um, you know, when Dynamite launched. So kind of uh, fun to see them come back out, and they did get a good pop for not being mm-hmm. again, um, not being really relevant for a couple of years. Uh, they did mm-hmm. get a pretty good, pretty good pop there in Newark, New Jersey. Um, Terry Allen Jr. with the three dollar and six cent super chat of uh, Justin. You speak to uh, it means Wardlow sometimes about life. Uh, I, I mean, we still keep in touch. I, you know, I kind of talk about a little bit of everything, but uh, yeah, so yeah, still cool. Still speak to the big man. Uh, hopefully, hopefully he listens. Hopefully he listens. And before you get to the next one, Justin, really quick, the, the other, you know, again, you, you know, me got to talk the little things yeah. again is uh, the timing of this. Like you, you guys pointed out after this match, you know, private party comes out, they, they do their little thing. People kind of, the, the match they just witnessed. Yeah. No, no, but fair, that always fair happens line. after an Orange Cassidy match. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, we had they, a put the, they put everything in their pockets. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the uh, Carman Live 2 on uh, the chat asking, saying, hi, Justin LaBar, NYC Demon Diva, and Jimmy Corderas. Greetings from Hammond, Indiana. Huh. Have you all ever heard of Fire Pro Wrestling at Impact Christian Church in Maryville, Indiana? Uh, I, mean, I don't think I have. Um, I have not, but I've been to Maryville, yeah. Indiana. Have you? Yeah. Oh, wait, you're wait. Ha- oh, you? Issa, you've told me this before. You worked in Indiana. I used to right? live in the Midwest. Yeah, I yeah, used to live in right. South Bend, Indiana. Touchdown sure, Jesus I, territory. I don't know if I've been to actually uh, Maryville, Indiana, uh, Merrillville, oh, Merrillville, Indiana. Okay. Yeah. But uh, Hammond, I've been to for sure, and I probably d- have driven through Merrillville many times. It's uh, over. The I was going to say, J- Jimmy, you you were on the road for for t- t- twenty plus years. You've set up a ring and 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 d- 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 counted to three in every little town at some point. Oh at yeah, some point. at some at some form or fashion in places you wouldn't you'd be actually shocked. But yeah. Yes. Uh, no, I, I'm not really familiar with them, the Carman Live too. But uh, there's, I guess, your free plug. Uh, people can Google mm-hmm. Fire Pro Wrestling and at the Impact Christian Church. Yes, and we wish you well. The Impact Christian Church. All right, up next, I love this backstage. <laughs> Tony Storm, not thrilled to be in New Jersey. <laughs> She's gonna go into the city, um, and Mariah May is gonna have her uh, debut match tonight in AEW. And uh, Tony Storm does not watch wrestling in New Jersey, mm-hmm. and so Luther carries her out. Uh, so we'll just set that up here as we go into Mariah May having her debut match against Queen Aminata. Uh, very happy to see Queen. Uh, got to work with her uh, before uh, on the independent scene. Uh, hardworking uh, young lady. So and then some hard hitting. Uh, moments in this match between Mariah May and Queen Aminata. They did not uh, they did not go lightly on each other. At the end of the day, though, as you'd expect, Mariah May does get the victory, hitting her May Day finish. Uh, after the match, she says that she hopes that Tony was watching and that she does diss New Jersey. And then, then cue the music. Out comes free agent that we had heard about, Deanna Perrazzo, no longer with TNA Impact Wrestling. She's from New Jersey, and she's got a message that uh, Mariah May could send back to Tony Storm about how she's coming 
for her. And uh, Mariah tells her she's no messenger. Uh, but the big news here is Jimmy, uh, Diana Perazu, the newest addition. She does get the uh, uh, she is elite graphic and confirmation mm-hmm. from Tony Khan on Twitter. So, uh, Diana Perazu, uh, again, don't really think you and I have ever talked much about her. I don't know how much you've seen of her, if any. Uh, I've been a fan of her. I, I, I'm, I'm happy to see her mm-hmm. be on television anywhere. Uh, but what say you get to come out in her home state uh, and seemingly thrusted right into uh, a women's title picture storyline? Well, of course, a smart move to debut her in her home state where she is very well known, especially from the crowd reaction that you got uh, in New- in Newark, New Jersey. And yes, she is a very talented woman. And I like the fact that it looks like they're putting some effort at least to maybe bolster that division. They do have some talented women there. It's just that they haven't been showcasing them on television enough or giving it, putting them in the right spots. On television, if that if you get my meaning, where that people could really get invested in the talent that they have there, and here's an opportunity now with someone who, uh, uh, you know, bolsters that division, and it looked like there was an effort tonight to put a little uh, more spotlight on the women's division, and hopefully that continues, and I think Deanna Peraza will be a big part of that. Issa, your reaction to Mariah May's uh, debut AEW match and uh, your reaction to the newest acquisition, Deanna Perrazzo. I was a big fan of this match. I was a big fan of both of these women. I was not very familiar with Queen um, Aminata, I think that's how you pronounce her name. And I absolutely ended up loving her, but I also thought that Mariah May looked great. They made each other look good. It was a very good women's match on AEW, which is great. Um, I, there was a couple of women's segments. You had you had Tony Storm backstage. You had you have Soraya and all the people backstage. You had this. You had what happened after the match. So I did feel like we were seeing a little bit more. I want to get too excited, but I did see that. I thought this was the perfect place to debut mm-hmm. Diana Pura. So I think you would have gotten. Uh, a reaction no matter where you did it but if you had the opportunity to debut her in New Jersey why not and it give it gave her a little extra confidence I will tell you one thing and I'm now nitpicking I'm in Jimmy Cordero territory here mm-hmm. uh, the promo from Mariah right after she couldn't breathe and I was like whoever's gonna interrupt her need to come out already because she's <laughs> struggling and, and after she caught her breath because um, Diana spoke her part and she was like I'm no messenger she delivered that very well but I was like, man, they did this right after this girl was struggling out there. But overall, I was a big fan of everything. And I hope that the honest, the beginning of, of seeing some changes here. I think she's incredible and she's going to do great things here. Yeah, Diana Perazu, uh, the best thing uh, for for and from New Jersey. Uh, several laps ahead of uh, Dave LaGreca, I would say. <laughs> Um, hey and yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and Queen Aminata, let me give let me real quick give, give her a shout. Um, sure. Th- find her on whatever social media platform you prefer she's on she's on instagram she's on twitter she's on all of them uh you know find whatever clips you can of her in a match just just follow her girl is a stud she is a gym beast she is an athletic beast like she is like she's she's legit and i know this is not her first aw match she's had matches on dark i think this is like her 19th to 20th match i think is what the the stat thing said so she's been getting some some reps is certainly the first one i believe live on dynamite which is, is the biggest deal and, and it was not a squash match i mean she got some offense um maybe more than maybe she even should have and i'm always kind of critical about the the non-contracted talent getting as much shine as they do against you know somebody who you're trying to position like a mariah may but that being that being said and to isa's point queen i mean not to gave mariah a little bit of a run which i might have think contributed to mariah being a little out of air there uh, but she kept up. Part. She kept up. They both made yeah. each other look great. I was a fan of this match. Yeah. Yeah. No, agreed. So uh, Tony Khan said on the press conference last week, and he's going to be active and aggr- active or aggressive, one of the words, in free agency in 2024. So already. But was uh, he wearing a hat and sunglasses when he said that, or when he, did he say that? Oh. When he was- Don't get me started. Don't oh, get me started. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> okay. It's the safest to. environment in wrestling. Yes. Mm-hmm. But he also feared for his life. I'm not sure which one is which, but he, <laughs> both did happen. And we suspended Andrade for punching somebody in the face backstage. But hey, it's super safe back there. Anyway, <laughs> out, comes, <laughs> out comes Christian Cage. He's got the entire posse with him. He's got Kill Switch. He's got Nick Wayne. He's got Shayna Wayne. Shayna Wayne immediately grabs the mic, tells everybody to put some respect on the patriarch here, on the father, on the TNT champ. Tells them all just to shut up. Uh, Christian Cage then talks about how there are no more title shots for Adam Copeland. Back of the line, Adam. 
And all while this is happening, he's just touting how he's, you know, this just proves what he's been saying for years, which is he's better than Adam and and, and outranks him. Uh, while this is all going on, uh, Luchasaurus chants coming from the crowd that's agitating Christian. And of course, his name's not Luchasaurus anymore. He's he's Kill Switch. I don't I don't feel great about that, but that's what he is. But he, of course, uh, he's getting revved up here and that and, and here and that. And then a you know, nice little touch to bear with Christian talking about how. He's going to be the greatest TNT champion and hold it forever until he decides to then give it over to his boy, Nick Wayne. So uh, obviously, Jimmy, we are um, long play. I don't know how long of a play this is, but long play right. setting up for Kill Switch to finally turn uh, on Christian. Uh, what did mm -hmm. you make of this entire segment here? No, it was a, it was what Christian does best. He gets people to boo him. He's a great heel. And he and he's it, it's a, you know, you talk about feeling real. It feels like Christian would actually agitate people backstage. And I know there were times where people have been, you know, because he liked he liked to poke. He's he's a sarcastic. He, he's, a, he's a sarcastic little bastard. At yeah, times. <laughs> he likes to poke the bear a little bit sometimes, you know, and doing it in the ring the way he does it is really good. The guy's just made to be a heel. And again, doing that little thing where he thanks everyone except the one person he should have thanked for retaining his championship, you know, planted that seed yeah. again. I just, you know, uh, he, he's going to help, uh, you know, he's going to turn so, so sooner or later. It's the timing of it is just going to be interesting. You, again, you want to take your time with this, let the, let him, you know, dig that hole deeper, so to speak uh, against uh, the former Luchasaurus now kill switch but don't wait too long before you pull that trigger because sometimes, you know, you lose the crowd and they go, okay, it should have happened like two months ago or whatever, yeah. but uh, they got, they got something, they got something there. Yeah, they have something. Issa, uh, I was actually, I was fine with uh, them doing the Gaga they did to have Christian retain or, or well, I guess regain the, the TNT title right. in a matter of seconds. Uh, because quite frankly, First off, Adam Cop Copeland doesn't need any titles unless it's going to be a world title run. I don't know if that's if that's in the cards, but he doesn't need a title. And I think Christian is far more effective hand standing there again with that title, uh, with his wall of of protection in front of a most notably kill switch. Uh, your thought on this promo, and are you interested in a kill switch finally seeing the light and turning on Christian? Um, yeah, I, I I was 50 50 on the decision, Justin, just because I thought with. Um, they're missing so many big stars on the roster right now. They could have gone back and forth and play with Christian trying to get this contract from Luchasaurus maybe for a week or two. But the way that it was done, it was shocking and it allows the story to continue. I like the promo. I thought this is the most comfortable that Nick Wayne's mom has looked out there. They are you going to boo a mother? Kind of pop me, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying seeing her grow, you know, as she's going to be part of this whole storyline. Um, but yeah, I, I was a fan of this and I think the Kill Switch turn is eventually going to come because I'm a big fan of Christian. You guys know that. Even tonight I was like, he's really not going to mention. He sat there and acted like he just retained. Like he didn't even mention that he did lose the title for a few minutes, yeah. but that's what Christian does. And he's, he's yeah. so good at his job. <laughs> no, he's very good. Yeah. Uh, Shayna Wayne. I don't, I think this might be the first time she's been in a live scenario. That I can recall. Speaking, we, I don't think she spoke before. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, we've seen her speak backstage. They do like to sit down or something right, backstage. backstage but, but, but when she yeah. would right. come out, it would just be to do something. We never heard her speak. Yeah, and 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 as you both know, it is different being out there in front of that live audience. It affects you in a different way. And she handled herself really well. Yeah, she did. So I, overall, well, uh, I'm, I'm all here for Christian. We'll see uh, how they how long they draw this out here with him. Uh, and Nick Wayne's had also some great facials. I don't think he even said anything tonight, but he's also getting better. He was doing some great facials as, you know, Christian was yeah. putting him over. A little lacking of the selling that he went through a fire table, you know, but that's I, I can live with that. It's been four days. Yeah. <laughs> the burns were off, I suppose. Yeah, yeah you know. I guess. I guess. <laughs> All right, this next match. He's almost... young. When you're that <laughs> age, it really goes away. And, and and he has hair, so it's uh, like at least for me, I have to worry about it here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this next match. Before I actually go through the match, I'm gonna go to the super chat about it first. Okay. For five dollars from Yes Boy, I don't smoke, but I need a cigarette after that to catch the Derby match. Happy New Year's, everyone. Mm -hmm. So, Kanosuke Takeshita, uh, part of the Don Cal's family, goes up against Darby Allen, and this match. So Darby at one point. 
does like a suicide dive where he dives between the bottom and middle rope and just meets a knee from Takeshita's you know, Takeshi's knee meets Darby's face. They do the spot of this rolling German suplex that he's giving Darby on the ramp. Darby gives like a sit down, a kind of stunner kind of deal off the ropes that looks like it really grabbed Takeshi's draw. Good selling by Takeshi. Takeshi misses Darby, runs in, his, his knee hit a barricade into the timekeeper's area. That looks brutal as all hell. Finally, Takeshi wins with the power drive knee to Darby's face. I, Issa, I don't, I mean, this, first off, uh, Takeshita gets the win. This was the most impressive and entertaining match and win that I've seen in AEW for Takeshita. So this was this was good for me in terms of like, yes, this dude's status and it helped. I mean, he's he's a pretty well built Japanese performer, and and especially having him in the ring with somebody as small as Darby that really emphasized Takeshita's size. So I don't know about you, but this was a big win for me here. Uh, I will say that, and but I will also say every time I watch a Darby match, I'm just like. How many more can he do? Like, th- I mean, it's yeah. a work, bro. Yeah, it's a we work. all worry. <laughs> we all worry <laughs> about it. I every single time. I I do a bingo card when I do um, live yeah. watchalongs at the pay per views, and I have a spot in there that's a Darby almost died spot for every pay per view because he's <laughs> just there. Um, this match was impressive. I feel like yes, boy here that spot that where th- that you were talking about the diving onto the knee the yeah. timing to pull that off so perfectly and how brutal it looked the camera angle that was perfection like that's those spots that leave you like what just happened and then they went from that to those suplexes onto the ramp like it, it was insane and i never really like you said, Keshta has never stood out to me. And tonight I was like, well, this guy's a badass, you know, and shout out to Darby because I mean, I, I, I worry about his well-being, but at the same time, he's selling and the things that he's willing to put himself through really makes the other person just looks like a monster. Everybody won. It was one of those matches. I was like, why is this happening? And halfway through it, I just wanted to grab some popcorn because that was, it was a treat match of the night. Issa, you say match of the night and yeah, there was that, Mm-hmm. The, the, those rolling German suplexes on the ramp. I mean, dare I say, dare I say, Issa, that Takesha might have just relocated Suplex City to Japan? I mean, you, you need to calm down. It's that not just that happened? Deep. I mean, I don't know. You need to calm down. It's not that deep, okay? okay. <laughs> but but it, it, really, you, you pope, read my... Pope, pope, I, pope, I feel pope, like you pope, read my pope. mind or my, my notes here uh, when you said about the selling. And, see, and that's sometimes one of the issues I have with their presentation is is the lack of or the inappropriate times to sell and not sell. But I thought both guys, like you said, came out of this looking good. You talk, we talk a lot about getting over without going over. And that's what happened here with Darby Allen. A big win for Takesha, like you said, uh, Justin, but Darby Allen got over in this match as well. Yeah. It's supposedly Darby's like training. Like he's going to go climb Mount Everest as K-pop lover just said, like, yeah, he. I, that's what I heard tonight too. I had no idea. I can't imagine what his life insurance premiums are. <laughs> I don't think he's insured. I think they have a picture of him on an insurance company. <laughs> it's like, do not insure this guy. <laughs> yeah, but maybe, yes, maybe maybe, maybe 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 he's insured by Tony Khan for like. Yeah. I don't know. Listen, but, but like you said, great, really great match, really entertaining, and yeah. the crowd was you. The crowd was into pretty much everything. I would, I mean, not, not, not to, I mean, we, there's still two other matches of the night, not to like, you know, normally this is something we'd like, I declare after the, after we do the whole show, but yeah, I'm going to say too, probably match of the night for me. I, this is probably the most entertaining start to finish. Um, and like you said, he says kind of out of, after a point, I just leaned back and said, well, this is just what it's going to be. <laughs> Let's just right. enjoy it and pre- <laughs> appreciate, appreciate them putting their bodies out there like that. There you go. And that uh, spot again, the timing, the timing yeah. to get that spot so perfectly. is just so impressive. Uh, one other note, it was, there was a challenge made backstage uh, after the fact and then later it was confirmed by Tony Schiavone that it's going to happen uh, They ch- uh, Don Callis challenged has Takesha and Hobbs challenging Darby and Sting next week uh, and that's going to happen on Dynamite they're back in they're back at Daly's place next week I, I don't know what, yeah. what that's about why why are we is it just for anniversary purposes it, was it did they have a trouble getting a building I'm not sure why but they're, but maybe they're trying to save some money you know new mm-hmm. year cut costs you never know uh. <laughs> I, I, if I had to bet on anything, I, I, I'll bet it's the anniversary thing. But, uh, oh, okay, Issa. Uh, We're going to save least... some money. There you go. Oh, you're so cute. Um, let's see. Here we got a super chat here. <laughs> Jake, all in our uh, $5. Happy New Year, Wrestling Inc. 
going to be a busy night of wrestling for me. Love Dynamite, then Wrestle Kingdom live in a few hours. Brian Okada, LFG. Yeah. If, uh... Plug, you can come watch it with me. I'm going to be watching it live on my channel. Are Enjoy you really? It, Jake. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. Are you going to sleep wow. and getting back up, or what are you doing? I'm not sure yet. Isn't that true? Quick nap. <laughs> I'm afraid if I take a nap, I won't wake up. <laughs> that's yeah. it. That's, that, that's I hear the thing. You. If you go to sleep, it makes it harder. It's kind of it's kind of like know, it's, it's kind of like I'm, it's like drinking. You can, you, it's like drinking. If you don't stop, you can't get the hangover. So it's, right, but I don't want right. to. I don't want to <laughs> not sleep and then spend my day off sleeping because tomorrow's my day off. So I have things to do. So I'm I'm debating. We'll see. But I'm watching it live on my channel. It's gonna be a blast. Cool. She's a she's a podcaster for the people. Mm -hmm. She's doing it for you. <laughs> All right, this one. <clears throat> we got a number one contender match, Fatal Four Way. Number one contender is gonna get the challenge. Eddie, how long it. did it take you to realize this was a Fatal Four Way? Well, I mean, I knew. What do you mean? What do you mean? I I don't know. Maybe I wasn't paying attention in the beginning when the entrances, but it took me forever. I was like, oh, it's a triple threat, and then somebody well, in the chat was like, it's a Fatal Four Way. Well, like, well I was like, maybe people were not in the ring too much, but it took me forever to put it together. Well, so, I mean, I knew that it was Fatal 4 Way because I, I did catch the advertisement earlier. But, all right, so we got Trent Beretta versus Brian Cage Why? versus Vikingo versus Why? Brian Keith. Now. Why? Who is Brian we, Keith? Have we ever seen him before? Okay, we, I'll stop. I'll stop. We have, we've, <laughs> we, we, we've, seen, we've seen him on Collision. We have seen him on other shows, but I don't know if he's ever been on Dynamite. He's the one out of the four who I don't think is actually under contract. I might be wrong about that, but I, I know the other three are. But we get Beretta's entrance. We get Cage's entrance. Then they go to Keith, who's already in the ring, so he gets the jobber entrance, and then we get Vikingo's entrance. That was really weird. You know, I don't know why that why, why they went in that order, and that makes it all kind of confusing. I guess Issa about it being a fatal four way, or what the hell's going on here? So the, the, the whole the gimmick here is you know, you're fighting for the number one contender for Eddie's new newly won Continental Classic title. He's at ringside on commentary. My question is why? Why these four? What criteria? What did any of these four do? Especially if one is not even under contract, what did these four do? No, no. Were any of these guys even in the tournament? No. Why not Thank go you. to people that did well in the tournament? Why not have a fatal four way between? They did it at at at, at World's End. Put them they in some it, yeah. kind of match. Like mm -hmm. grab the the next best three four guys and put them in a match. Those should be the guys going against Eddie. Shout out to Eddie. That was incredible. I'm so happy he got his moment. Yeah, happy for Eddie. I'm just but again, I'm watching this match yeah. and I'm like, why these four? What do these <laughs> four? And then Jimmy. Uh, so Trent Beretta wins, which actually mm -hmm. surprised me. I didn't why? see it coming. I yeah. didn't see it coming. So Trevor wins. And all I can think is this match is now done. Is I'm like, if I'm Brian Cage on a night where it's a new year and it feels mm -hmm. like Dynamite's kind of moving in the next chapter and, okay, next next guy's up, next girl's up, you know, whatever. Some of the OGs aren't around. If I'm Brian Cage, who's been around for quite a while, he's been around, you know, if I'm Brian Cage, I'm like, I ain't getting, I'm not getting no push at all. Mm -hmm. Because if it was ever going to happen, this would have been the one to have it happen. Where he, it, but No, I understand that completely. But at the same time, I guess the fatal four way scenario gives them an out where he doesn't have to be the one to lose the match and get pinned and then, or, or, you know, uh, be the fall guy. Let's put it that way. And Trent Beretta, again, it's like you're saying, why, why these four, it, it, it didn't make any sense. You might as well have just taken a hat with a bunch of names in them and drawn four names and said, okay, you guys go to the ring and whoever wins gets a shot. It, you know, they made a big deal out of this championship with the tournament and making it feel so important. And then it just felt like four random choices for a fatal four-way match to determine who's going to be the first contender. Yeah. It, it, it didn't, it, it doesn't mesh. And then Housen was there too. Oh, yes. I he, was. he was in the match at one point. I was so confused <laughs> by everything, honestly. <laughs> Dan Housen was there. But this is mm -hmm. true. All right, so uh, Trent wins, so he will have a number one contenders match against. And, and here's the thing: in all seriousness, though, can't wait. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the, the the reason again is I know there's some people out there that are huge, huge AEW fans and that are mad at me for for bringing this critique. But here's what here's the purpose of the critique: you have an, you have now yet another title. You already have the AEW titles that did exist, and then they bring these ROH titles that also now appear on AEW television quite regularly. And now you've created another title. Another title from this Continental Classic. And so, out the gate, you give a number one contenders match that, like, that, you know, that have with no rhyme or reason who the four, why the four in the match. Like he said, none of them were in the tournament. So, it's not like they're even like getting like con a consolation prize here to try to be the first contenders for it for the title. Um, it, it, it immediately takes away any credibility or importance from this 
yet another piece of hardware that we're trying to establish as meaning something. So that's the that's the problem here. That's the problem I have with it for anybody who's the mm-hmm. oh, bars hating on AEW. That, that's just I'm trying to like bring that bring that out. Uh, Darius Roby, Super Chat, four ninety nine. Thank you, Darius, saying, willing to bet my house that Darby's going to jump off Mount Everest at first after he makes it to the top. Well, I hope if he, he makes it to the top, that is know. such a, that is actually a yeah. really dangerous thing to attempt, and a lot of people mm-hmm. don't succeed. Not only like listen, look it up. I'm not going to yeah. go down that dark right. rabbit hole. <laughs> Yeah, um, I was gonna. I was gonna make a somebody will cover him and he'll kick out anyway. But uh, <laughs> I, went, I didn't want. I did. I really didn't want to go there. But, but you did. Not, that was but, the but best my, ever. Oh, oh. <laughs> so what are we? So what are we booking here? Is, is Darby gonna fight Sting in March? Is Sting's last match, and then 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 Darby loses, and then Sting or then Darby goes off to Mount Everest? Is that what we're timelining here? I, I have no. Oh boy. Wow. Loser climbs Mount Everest match <laughs> <laughs> revolution. Oh my, oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help oh, myself. Jimmy, Jimmy, that was incredible. <laughs> Burning DC, kick out of the avalanche, full of snow at two and <laughs> <four stars. laughs> uh, oh Aaron Mix saying Darby did the Mount Everest climb during the tournament. Now, really? Oh, no. I feel like we would have heard about that. Really? No. No. That can't be true. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Somebody f- figure out if Darby's going up Everest yet and let us know. I don't I don't know. Right. All right. Uh, main event time. Uh, both these guys, we saw promos earlier in the night. I figured I'd just hold them for now. We saw backstage pre-tape promos. Uh, well, well Daniel Garcia is a pre-tape. Swerves was live. Daniel Garcia talking about how he doesn't fold, does, does not fold under pressure. Um, he's working towards titles for 2024. Swerve backstage with uh, Renee. Same thing. He's coming for Joe and that title. He's looking for titles in 2024. So this is our main event. The main event, and it is again, it's being framed as you know, the, the, like two stars, you know, two up and coming stars here. So that's kind of the that, that's the whole thing. There's no titles in the line. There's no official number one contendership. It's just kind of basically who can kick off their 2024 uh, with a win and some momentum. Uh, early on in the match, we get a spot on the outside where we get a dance off between Prince Nana and Dana Garcia. I was actually very entertained by that. I thought it was mm-hmm. kind of well placed. Uh, and then the crowd pop pick for it. Um, yeah, this one again, pretty intense. They they do the overrun here. We will stick with it for the end of it. They do. Uh, Swerve's going to get the win though, and after that, Hangman Page comes out, and then him and Swerve just start battling and brawling. Everybody trying to keep these two apart. Uh, very, very, uh, you know, very intense kind of finish here. I thought we were done with Page and and Swerve, but guess not, Isa. Um, so here we are. Uh, yeah, I I love the dance though. I'm not even mm. gonna lie. <laughs> I was quite entertained. Like as soon as they announced the match, you're just expecting the dance off to happen. Um, uh, the match had a couple of rough spots. That table spot was terrible. Oh, oh, um, yeah. But yeah, 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 yeah. The sharpshooter one. Ta- and Taz is tra- Taz is trying to cover it, saying, "Oh, they're just yeah. great move by Swerve to just roll out of that sharpshooter." <laughs> Uh, you know what? Uh, if, if I might just jump in really quick here yeah. to, before you continue, Isa, uh, I, I got to give Taz a lot of credit because if it wasn't for Taz out there on the commentary desk, he's he covers up a lot of stuff. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, he's very uh, good. He does a really good job. Of that. Um, but yeah, they 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 had a good match here. Um, Swerve is just incredible, and he keeps looking incredible out there every week. Um, I just, I me, mean, I don't want to. I want to say that I don't know that they can outdo that dead match, that Texas dead match, but it's like unless you can outdo it, don't don't go back to this. Don't do mm-hmm. part three. That match was brutal, violent. It was great. Also, didn't he drink his blood? That's how you become blood brothers. They should be closer than ever yeah. now. So I don't even understand why they're still feuding. I, I mean, I agree. Once you have a death match, how do you that, that that's usually like right. the absolute roll the credits. We're done. Like I, mm-hmm. I so. Um, I would assume they don't want um, Samoa Joe to, like, maybe his first title defense. Like, you know what I mean? Maybe they want Samoa Joe to hang on to his title for a little bit, you know? So he's not going to be a champion for a week or two. Therefore, maybe we're trying to keep Swerve on the back burner for a little bit longer. Well, sure. No, I don't expect Swerve to be the first challenger to Joe. I expect Joe to knock off a few wins here, even on Dynamite, before we even get to maybe his first real serious challenger at, at, at uh was a revolution in march um so. he'll fight brian cage <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like I mean, you know, like swerve like i mean okay swerve's made it you know he wants to go after joe 
Right. Adam Cole told us earlier that Wardlow is going to go after the world title. Yeah, Adam Cole did say, Joe, it's hopefully it's not you because I hate to screw over a friend. Wink, wink. But I mean, yeah. like, you know, so, you, so like you could have Wardlow and Swerve kind of cross paths of like who's going to. I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I don't. Them, them interjecting Hangman back in this. Yeah. Does feel a bit like moving backwards. Yeah. Um, and, and again, d- doing this after the match, too, uh, again, took away from the match itself, which I thought was a good match. I thought Swerve and, 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 and Garcia had a good match. And, you know, you can question whether that was a reason to put them in the main event. You know, what was it for other than we're elevating two talents that we're building our future towards. But it felt like at, at the end of it, when, with all the aftermath and the shenanigans that went on afterwards, it just felt like this match was placed there so they could have that aftermath. And that yeah. was the only reason that match took place. Uh, thank you to Issa. She sent me the uh, the clarification. Darby is uh, training. He's a- aiming for April or May to climb Everest. So, yeah, that was timeout. He, he, maybe he's part of Sting's last match in March, and then off uh, he goes. Yeah, it's so on Wrestling Inc. You guys can find it. There we there go. You thank know. you, Issa. Uh, so that was Dynamite tonight. So, like we said, it was a, it was a Dynamite of uh, lack of the OGs. It was um, in a lot of ways. It was living. a Dynamite. It was, yes. it was a Dynamite. It was a dynamite. They they got a long stretch. They got to early March until they have the next pay per view. Again, they do like dynamite specials. They always do those. So I don't. I'm sure we'll get some of those. But uh, they got a few months here uh, until we get to our next uh, next pay per view for AEW Dynamite. So uh, Jimmy, final thoughts here on tonight's Dynamite. Uh, just general state, I guess, of AEW at the moment, and and, and where can people find what you got going on? Uh, well, no, uh, uh, I thought it was fine. There's a lot of good stuff and entertaining stuff on the show, but there, again. There wasn't that standout moment where that made people go gasping, and and that's what you want. You want people to tune in, reasons for people to tune in, as opposed to uh, reasons for putting matches out there to further. Uh, this sounds contradictory, to further a storyline that uh, is questionable. Because, like you mm-hmm. said, for example, the last one with Hangman and, and and Swerve getting back into each other's faces, the the that match that they had should have been the, like you said, the final credits and so forth. So but other than that, there was entertaining moments. It was, it, there was some fun stuff, but again, a lot of screws needed to be tightened and should have been tightened. And there wasn't that one big superstar we did, you know, that you expect at least uh, a nice surprise though, with uh, Deanna Perrazzo mm-hmm. and that's a good get. And I'm looking forward to seeing where they go with the women's division from there. And as far as where you can catch me, uh, obviously on here on Wednesday nights with you two, which is, which is a blast. And on Monday nights with triple J, sorry, Isa, we have fun there too, as well. Uh, you can catch me on the Reffin it up podcast with my good brother in stripes, uh, Brian Hebner and RJ who holds the glue together. And this week we have our stripes awards for 2023, where we give out certain little awards and have a little fun discussing things we like. And of course the ref and rant for this week is, uh, at least is going to be positive because it is the beginning of a new year. So instead of Aww. critiquing, I'm going to be positive. But trust me, the critiquing will be coming back. Uh, but, <laughs> but, but give it a, give it at least a week before I, I do that. Jimmy DeIso on the Triple J there. He's like, your name doesn't start with J. You can't sit with us. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I didn't yet. Really. I'm just dropping. I, uh, she likes. She's wearing pink. She likes the Mean Girls. Uh, Issa, yeah. uh, <laughs> thoughts on Dynamite and uh, where can people find you? Um, yeah, I, like I said, I thought it was just an episode of Dynamite. Um, I, I'm very excited for Diana Parazzo, and I give them credits for featuring more women. Even though only one match, there was a couple more women's interviews backstage and all that. Um, that the Christian Darby match was insane. Um, you guys can find me NYC Demon Diva across all socials, including here on YouTube. I will be live for Wrestle Kingdom. I'm also here on Friday for SmackDown. I'm going to be at WWC shows here in Puerto Rico on Saturday. So I'm a busy girl. No sleep, no days off. Nice. And, no rest and, for and, the weary. And really quickly, a shout out to see, we talked about the women too. Shout out to my old, uh, uh, not old, my, my, my former colleague and still current friend, Renee. Uh, I guess Moxley now, Renee Paquette, who uh, <laughs> was featured heavily tonight, and she does an incredible job. So, Renee, yeah. that's all. Yeah, a, uh, T- a TSN. Uh, e- e- no, 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 no. Not, or no. the score. It was originally the score, and then it was, um, you know, Sportsnet. Sportsnet, okay. Right, yeah. Can't keep up with these Canadian iterations of sports channels. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love the intro that you guys used to have back in the day with you, her, and Arda. You guys are all on the face paint and the, the, the strobe yeah. was from blinking. Well, we had some fun. I I, 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 I used to love the, uh, believe it or not, the, the Halloween episodes because they would have us dress up. And uh, I dressed up one year as Triple H and got a lot of uh, feedback on that one. Let's put it that way. I love that. Where's the picture, Jimmy? Oh, I'm. I'll find it one day and I'll send it to you. I'm not going to post Please. it. I don't. I don't need the heat. <laughs> did uh, did did uh, the old game himself give Corduroy a little little feedback? It, uh, he may have. Yeah, Let's yeah, see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, she is Isa. He is Jimmy. I am Justin. Um, yeah, I thought tonight's time it, it was okay. There was times it was entertaining. Again, the like I said, the Takeshita match very good. The the opening promo for the most part with Adam Cole and company good. Um, you know, some things to question. Definitely not the grandest hype or grandest feeling um, show ever. But uh, you know, that's I guess we're coming com- coming off a couple of days of a pay per view. They got a big reset here, so that's not to be uh, surprised with. Uh, before I get my final plugs, Blue Chew's asking Jimmy the last question of the night. Jimmy, ever ref a midget match? Any good stories? Oh my goodness! Yes, I have. I have ref the uh, the little guys uh, and uh, boy stories. Uh, I, let me put it this way: I, I ref some hornswoggle matches. That's all you need to know. But yeah, the the one that, that made me laugh the, the most though that he he did a run in one time and he came running down the ramp and he almost like he fell in. You know, there's a middle pole mm-hmm. between the two pole that holds you know the yeah. ring together in the middle. He almost hit that. Going, oh my. That's the that's the that's the pole that Titus did a spear into at the one yes. Saudi Arabia show. The greatest, yeah, promo. yeah, and and it, it, the other stuff too is we had to sneak him under the ring one time uh, before a match, you know, at at intermission. So they put the lights out, we covered him up, and we acted like we were doing some repairs to the ring. And as we were trying to sneak him under the ring, he may have eaten a few uh, boots and elbows and stuff. But anyways. <laughs> Great stuff, great stuff. Um, I'm at Just Labar across the socials. Uh, you can see me here on Mondays and Wednesdays on Wrestling Inc. Every single Friday morning, Spar with Labar, myself, David Greco, and Thunder Rosa on Busted Open. That's just about a half hour, Spar with Labar. And then if you want to go the full three hours with me, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. to noon, Busted Open now, seven days a week. And uh, Sunday's a great show because not only is it a wrestling Saturday night, whether it's a collision or whether it's a, a, pre- a pay-per-view or PLE, but it's Sunday. So it's kind of like I get to, we get to kind of like catch all Silly. the entire – we get to kind of catch all the whole week that happened. We get to talk about what's coming up Monday. It's a fun show. You're um, everybody's Sunday morning coffee, buddy. I hope you know that. Yes, 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 yes. I, I, I'm. I have coffee I'm with you, and I take you to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> just, put, just, just put me in your cup. Put me in your purse. Take me with you. I'm happy to, 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 to narrate your Sunday morning. That's what I'm. <clears> and there may be there may be some pancakes in there as well on Sunday morning. So Ooh, yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah, tweet tweet at me. Let me know how where, where where how am I fitting into your life on this this glorious Sunday morning? Uh, myself and Jonathan Hood back together uh, this Sunday. It's gonna be a great show. Uh, thanks to both of you. Love both of you. Always a great time. Thanks everybody in the chat. Thanks everybody uh, who watches uh, after the fact, listens after the fact. Do whatever you gotta do. Be safe. Be good. We'll be back next week.